Welcome to the Intelligent Investing Podcast, where modern portfolio theory can suck it. A student of the school of Graham and Doddsville and a clergy member of the Church of Warren Buffett, here's your host, Eric Schlein. Hi, this is Eric Schlein. You're listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast. Uh, today, we have a special corner of Berkshire and Fairfax edition, uh, which is a value investing message board that I'm a big fan of and has an amazing community. So shout out to all you amazing people uh, who helped make that community incredible. Today, we have a member from that community. I do not know how to pronounce your username because every time you say it, I can't replicate it. So how do you say your username? Speculatius. Exactly. That's why I can't pronounce it. So s- say it one more time. Speculatius. Sp- speculatius. Close enough. That's okay. I'm going to not even try again. I'll, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll quit while I'm ahead. So, t- what does that mean exactly? It's a wordplay, really. Uh, speculatius is close to speculation. Okay. So, there's a money angle to it. And it's also a. Christmas cookie that is pretty popular in Germany or in uh, in Holland, Dutch, Speculus. If you ever want to go to Trader Joe's, you can find them there. See, I should have had you on Christmas Eve, and then I could have had, like, I'm having a Christmas cookie on Christmas Eve. It would have been very timely. So, late Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And this is the first podcast we're doing after the Christmas Eve podcast. Uh, which I thank you for all your feedback on that one. Um, now, before we get started, can you just tell us a little bit about you know what you do? And I know you I know you invest in a lot of very uh, obscure uh, kinds of stocks. Is that correct? Yes, obscure obscure stocks, but also just uh, you know the regular stocks, uh, large caps, and pretty much uh, across the board, I do international stocks. Uh, my accent is from Germany, so I buy German stocks too, Japanese stocks, pretty much everything that is cheap. Okay, interesting. And I also want to say that today is the first time we have, I can't even say this with a straight face, a live studio audience of one, <laughs> where we have another member from the corner of Berkshire and Fairfax. He's not going to say anything today. He's just going to be our... Uh, our, our live studio audience, and uh, I'm sure they'll be cheering and applauding every time we just say something crazy. So, I don't... <laughs> well, welcome to the welcome to the studio. I, right, thank I, you. I'm sure you can describe how incredible, immaculate it, it is, and how much work we put into it. And yeah, um, as you can see, our, our engineer and producer in the back waving to you, <laughs> who's also me, by the way. But I wasn't supposed <laughs> to say that. So anyway, what uh, what kind of uh, what, what do you want to talk about today? The, well, we have discussed some uh, really obscure companies, and the one I own, mm-hmm. and uh, full disclosure, um, I own, and that that I think is a pretty interesting company to look at is uh, Queen City Investments. So, what what do they what do they do? Well, it's sometimes hard to tell, but you have to look at it a little bit deeper. Okay. It's really uh, a little mini conglomerate, I would say. Um, it's it, 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 it's 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 a mixture of businesses, oh, well, con- yeah. conglomerate. Yeah. If there's something I don't understand, I'm just going to ask you what to say. So. Yes. Cool. And uh, it's a trust business foremost, um, and it manages about I think 2.4 billion in assets. Um, then it's um, it's a bunch of land in Central California, about 25k acres, farmland. Cattle ranches, and it's um, it's a bunch of cash too, and real estate holdings. And uh, how did you find this? Um, I found it when a couple of years ago I won a scan on the um, for OTC stocks, and I looked at everything that was trading for more than five hundred bucks per share. Okay. And the idea was a simple one. There's so much kind of a dinky little companies there that that are probably fraud that I figured that, well, if it trades for more than 500 bucks per share, it's probably not a fraud. So I was looking for in- expensive looking shares. And I found a couple of interesting ones. 
one of them was LA company that, that we talked about briefly before and that some people are owning. And the other one was Queen City Investments. And there are a couple more. Okay, interesting. And maybe some of the other ones we can do for uh, future podcasts. Sure. If, if, if I don't scare you away from, from, from yeah. this one. So, so, so um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what, when uh, you looked at the company, what, what had you want to buy it? If you can maybe talk to us a little bit about the history of the business. Give us a little background. Yes. The, the history is, as far as I know, is that it was basically spun off from a bank business from the Walker family, which is FMBL, that's a significantly sized bank, business bank in Southern California. It's a very solid bank and it's an interesting stock to look at just by itself. Trades at, I think, about $8,000 per share. Okay. Um, and it was spun off, as far as I know, in the 70s. And um, it's been traded occasionally ever since. Huh. Um, I don't know exactly what happened between 1970s and uh, 2000s, but when I first looked at it, it pretty much looked the same way I describe it now. It's 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 a cash box to some extent. Um, the the shares trade just lately at eleven hundred seventy dollars. It's a bit, I believe, and the ask is probably ten percent higher. Okay. Um, so they don't trade every week. Uh, full disclosure: don't go out and buy them on a market bid. Um, and um, so I have broken down the valuation a bit. There are 47,800 shares out there. They don't buy back shares, so it's been steady ever since. Um, for $1,170 per share, you get about $400 per share in cash and securities. So securities are money bonds, I believe. You get about, um, I think, $70 million in properties, uh, real estate properties in it, which I figured are worth probably about $500 per share. You get 25 acres or 0.52 acres in quite beautiful looking California land, Central California land near coastal. Um, which is worth, it's a little bit hard to tell. I would say it's probably worth between um, 12000 and $15,000 per acre. Does this land do anything or is it just kind of sitting there? Well, it's a cattle Oh, ranch. it's the cattle, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a cattle ranch. There are mineral rights that they own because we know that I was able to pull up that they did some drilling at some point there but it was abandoned. Okay. Um, so I believe they have the mineral and uh, surely they have the water rights on it if somebody wants to play that angle. Um, and it's it's probably just breaking even for them. I don't think it makes any money. They, they just So why do they continue that? What's their incentive to continue that business if it's not making any money? I have no idea. Huh. I think... I think what this in the end is, the only thing I can figure out, it, it's a wealth management thing for them. They just want to keep that for maybe future generations. And it probably should have never traded and, and some shares leaked out. Somebody sold them to get liquidity and now they're out there and they can't put them back in a box. Right. So um, I would think it's 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 a little bit uh, like a treasure chest. You you find them and and it, there's more in it than you pay for, but you don't, you can't get the money out of it either, right? It's, right. Um, now the good news is the trust management business itself is 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 generating the cash. Uh, it's about I think they make about fifty, and last year about sixty dollar per share. About I think one point four million dollar in income or. It was one year. It's it's more now. It has been growing slowly over time. Okay. Um, so they pay a small dividend, ten bucks per share, and it hasn't changed forever either. So they just basically what they do is they, they generate slowly accumulate cash. The book value grows from retained earnings, and they recycle that into more real estate. So which, they're buying more real estate. They're not yes. Yeah. Over time, I've seen them buying real estate. They had some 
partnership that they bought out and it, it happened it was a locust LLC it was a limited partnership nobody knew what it was but at the end it was dissolved and it turned out to be real estate and they bought it fully so does the, does the stock tend to react at all when they make an acquisition no because <laughs> I, 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 I don't think that really See, they, they only give an annual report to shareholders okay. out. So you're not going to get see any information online. And right. that annual report that comes out typically in May, it's it's dated in May, it comes out in June. And shortly after we received it, they have a shareholder meeting typically on the 4th of July weekend, which I think makes sure that the attendance is as low, as, low as possible. possible. But I think you could go there in be Long fun, Beach huh? and... Uh, and ask a few questions. I don't. I would do it if I lived close by. You think you could make make the trip one year? Think you would do that? Yeah, I should have made it when I lived in California back yeah. then. It would have been shorter. Now it's uh, that could be that could be a fun thing. I I hope that somebody else uh, does it and and reports to me. There are I, I know some shareholders in that uh, that I over time contacted, cool. and uh, I I sent them the annual reports. Um, and there are some people that know that there's something out there. And how have you found these other shareholders of the company? They're through online communities. Okay. And there's, you know, the oddball stocks and OTC guys. Okay. So if you ever have a question about some of them, you should really contact these guys. And they know something. Right. Huh. They may not know everything, but often they know some, oh, there's some shareholder out there that does this and this. Um, and what, what do you estimate they're, they're growing their intrinsic value every year? I mean, is there, is there a way to really figure that out? What they... Yeah, I mean, if you, you say how much do you think they're worth, say, today, the, the company? If you have yes, a, if you can make a sum of the part analysis, and I did it and actually posted it online on... Uh, at that point, it was Silicon Investor. I came up with about $2,200 per share. Okay. So it's about, yeah, 50%. And that was a couple of years ago, so I, I figured out it's probably worse than that. It's, it's a little bit more than that right now. It's just to retain the earnings. And have you looked at, I mean, have they been successful in, in their capital allocation towards uh, real estate acquisitions? Have they shown to be savvy investors in that space? It's a little bit hard to tell. What I can tell is that over time, their rental income grows. By, did you, by what percent? they've been growing that because that would be that would be interesting to, to yeah it went up from two million dollars in 2013 to two and a half million dollars in 2017 according to my notes these are just roundabout values trust fees went up from 7.8 million to 9.2 million it's a slow grower right it's not it's not anything fantastic but i think I think what they want to do is they, they, they want to have a store of value in this. They're not trying to optimize earnings. They have their trust management that pays the bills and creates the accounting profits, and the rest is probably just for tax reasons or yeah. whatever. They, 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 they ac uh, slowly accumulate real estate. And is it, who own, is it a family that owns like the majority of the shares? Or yeah, it, it it seems like it's, most of those are still probably from the initial spin-off. There is a Walker family is, is in the shareholder base, um, and they are the same guys that run the FMBL Farmers Bank of uh, okay. California. Yeah, and are they are they paying themselves like egregious salaries and kind of using this as just a um, you know, a way to steal from shareholders, or you looked at well, that? that that would be my first concern. It's it's yeah, it's a valid question. I don't know if they're overpaying themselves. I know there is some related party transaction with okay. uh, FMBL where they share some branches, mm -hmm. but that probably makes sense. That I mean, sense. they they pay some rent to, to FMBL, but they also FMBL also rent some space from them. And whether that's fair or not, I I don't. But I think they would just steal pocket and, uh, and put it from one pocket to the other if they steal from it. So I don't think it makes too much sense for them to do that on that base. Whether they're overpaid or not, I, I can't tell. But I can say that the trust management looks reasonable. 
The numbers look reasonable. And then you could say the the real estate is probably growing a little bit in value every year as well. Well, we know that the rental income grows, and and right. California real estate is not too bad. So it's right. it's in the L.A. area somewhere there, Long okay. Beach. That's where the address and, is. And L.A. real estate's been growing at like what six seven percent a year for a little bit. Something that's like that. that's possible. I wouldn't. You could probably I know that look from the revenues that they, they place on rent income and, and put a multiple on it. And that's kind of what I did in a roundabout way when I said there, there was um, about, let me look up my notes, what the real estate is worth. I had it at that point packed at a $460 per share. It should be more than that. It was this $2.2 million rental income. I said it's... It's probably 10x that income. Okay. That was my guesstimate. But yeah, you can put your own cap rates on it. And it's probably in a roundabout way. I would say it's 500 bucks per share. Okay. And that's using what cap rate? Well, it's 10, 10 times the rental income okay. because I don't know what the expenses are. Right. Um, Do they break that out in their financial statements? The, the, the uh, disclosure is is not is not the greatest. Is it all, is it all consolidated into like one? It's it's consolidated. They have a, a somewhat of a breakdown, and I I would be happy if if I get contacted to send an annual report. That would report. be a good question too for an annual meeting. Have them break it break things down a little bit more. That would be. What I would want to know is is. Having them break down the numbers, you know, in, in more depth of their different divisions, and then also see if they had some sort of grander vision or larger plan for their business too. That would be interesting to, to hear from the management. Yeah, right? it would be nice to have a breakdown of where this this real estate is located. I I believe some people have when that's fine. That was when the Yahoo message boards were functional, and he pulled out tax records and pulled out what buildings they own but but the uh, the oh. yahoo message boards they, they were basically changed uh, they are not usable really anymore so i think that information may be lost but i oh. think somebody could put in work and find out where that real estate and which buildings they own and and and, oh. and do this kind of stuff and if anyone I mean, has that information you know feel free to send it along uh that would be interesting to see Huh. Yeah, I. And what what I, do you think that dividend is for? Is it just to, to it's pay a ten dollar dividend, which has been the same. Is that what they live off? You think? Yeah, it's been the same Probably ever good, since. Right? They, they can't. They don't really buy stock either, which I think would be probably the more. Well, can they really with that kind of liquidity? Well, that's the problem. Right? I think, but they might be able to do that when when there is a seller there. They they you can't sell it really on the open market right. either. I mean, I, I've right? seen companies I mean, like this where if there's a, a shareholder who wants to sell back to the company, they'll buy back stock. From yes, them. yeah, that kind of stuff. Since they they pretty much know each other too. You know what would be guess. interesting? I wonder if you call them up and see if they'd buy from you at a premium. You never know. Could but you they? don't plan to sell it for a while, though, right? You know, I kept it as such, and I—I I mean, it hasn't really moved up as much as even the market in the time I held it. But it, it's not terrible either. I think it's one of those stocks that all of a sudden goes up probably by fifty percent in a month, and yeah. maybe even more. Who knows? Right. Interesting. But I think it's almost impossible to move money on this thing. I mean, that's that's kind of the attraction if you look at it. I mean. I mean, how how hard is it to to lose money on on a ranch land real estate and all I mean, just I, one? I guess your, I mean, biggest can't risk, your biggest risk is just dead money for twenty years or something like that. That is correct. Right? I mean, that is a risk, but that's a slow risk that it's, you it's can not take. A bad risk and, to have, yeah, yeah. It's better than buying Bitcoin and losing ninety five percent of your money, right? Unless you bought Bitcoin at like five cents, and then you're still doing okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. You can regard these things as a backbone of a portfolio, so to speak, and might be, in a way, these illiquid stocks, sometimes, even when there's a really bad market route, they actually often hold up better yeah. than other stocks. You can actually use them 
Occasionally, I've used them as a source of liquidity. I mean, if you it, it sounds <laughs> you can't really go on the bid, but you can right. put a bid out there, and it's probably not kind the best, create, but you could. If the market ever tanks 50%, I don't believe that this stock would go down to 500 bucks per share. I don't think... Oh, what's trading at right now? It's, uh, I think it's 1170 bit and okay. uh, 1250. I mean, it's typically like a 10%. But okay. there are... I mean, you've got to be patient with these things. Every once in a yeah. while, there, there are sellers out there and, and, and they will hit your bid. Yeah. Or they will hit your ask. I mean, when there's buyers out there, it just doesn't happen very often. It's kind of almost like, well, it just really is. It's a private business, basically. How it's, many shareholders are there? Do you know? Probably under 100. Uh, right? I would doubt it. Yeah. I mean, maybe there are, but uh, I know three. Um, well, let's put it this way. I know another company, which I'm not going to say in the air, that has slightly over 100 shareholders in Three of them are in this room right now, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Interesting. So where would you, what price would it have to get to for you to consider to sell it? I think it really depends on what the rest of the market is doing. Oh, I nice mean, fair. I would even say, let's say if you get a really route in the stock market and somebody hits my bid at 1170 and i see do you have a set, do you have a sell order right now for 1170 is that or are you saying hypothetically hypothetically okay. i would uh, i haven't sold any yeah but i would i would consider then just saying because i, I, I need liquidity and i really yeah. don't do margin or in ias i can't do margin anyways right. uh, by the way in in uh in in Fidelity, uh, you can't buy them. They're, they're, these companies, the dark companies, Fidelity doesn't allow you to buy them anymore. Fidelity is a crock of shit. Some of the stuff they've been doing in terms of not letting you yeah, they, buy certain companies. I bought them in Fidelity, so you could. And then you're but then, with it, right? So you can sell it. But you can't you can it sell it, back. but you can't buy it yeah. back. But most other brokers, like E-Trade, they will allow you to, to trade these still. Fidelity, get your shit together. Seriously. Huh. Interactive brokers probably would let you buy that too. Yes, yeah. they do. Even interactive brokers don't let you buy anything. I mean, there are some stocks that you can't can't buy at interactive yeah, brokers. I, yeah, because I, I, I tried to get shares of something and they they wouldn't somehow they don't show up in their system. Or, yeah, that happens occasionally. So interesting. Any, any other uh, things you want to say about the business? It's pretty simple. I think it's a simple business. It's it's what I like about it is that all the parts of it probably over time get more valuable. Now, even if the discount doesn't close, if it ever closes and it always trades for 50 cent on the dollar, the share value should increase by, I would say, sing single digits uh, yeah. at least. Um, and that's come hell and high water, really. Um, and that's probably not a bad place to be. I'm pretty sure land, uh, there are land payers out there that if you put put this piece of land, which is a really nice piece of land, out for sale, somebody would yeah. bid on it. You I know, mean, it's, one of the, when these like families die or something, they pass it on to an heir, and the heir wants nothing to do with it. Sometimes you see corporate transactions happen like that. I, yeah. I could see it happening in that situation. Do you know how? Do you know how old the management is? Because that that would actually be interesting. Yeah, the guy's like running. It's like ninety years old. No, I don't think the workers are. They, 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 the bank is run from generation to generation, yeah. so I think they they might be able to renew themselves. But you know, I haven't. I don't recall. Huh. I think they're probably in their fifties, sixties. Okay, interesting. Well, anyway, it was a pleasure having you on the show, and uh, hope to have you back on for uh, talking about some other obscure businesses. Thank you. Yeah, Thank of course. You. All right. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast with Eric Schlein. If you'd like to connect with Eric for questions, comments, feedback, ideas, or to inquire about being on the show, please contact Eric at intelligentinvesting at gmail.com. So, in the words of Charlie Munger, I have nothing to add. <laughs>